Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Crip13 and today I want to give you my overview for Ganyu. We're going to be going over some basic builds, free to play weapon options, frame data, and some of the nuances that are exclusive to her kit. We're also going to be going over which role she should be played in, her overall damage output for really low investment levels, and her energy generation. I will also be making some weapon videos and some team comp videos for Ganyu in the future as well, so make sure you subscribe for that. And then I'm gonna let you guys know if I think she is worthy of being a 5 star and if she's worth pulling. Spoilers, yes, she is totally worth being a 5 star, and she is of course our first waifu banner. Her banner is debatable because it does feature two free characters, so it might not be for everybody, but, but the banner is certainly not terrible. Anyway, let's get into it. So let's do a quick overview on Ganyu real quick. Let's go over her talents. So the first talent is her normal attack, and this move is what separates her from all the other archers. She has two levels of charge. At level 1 charge, this is pretty much what we're used to with all the other bow users currently in the game. And then she has her level 2, which fires off a Frost Flake Arrow and Frost Flake Bloom, where the Bloom causes AoE Cryo damage. The Bloom is what makes her so strong because the scaling on this move is incredibly high. Ganyu's elemental skill is the Trail of Chilin, where it will taunt enemies and it also deals summoning damage and explosion damage once the effect expires. Her ultimate is the Celestial Shower, and it's quite a random ult, but it hits a decent number of times during its whole duration against both moving enemies and stationary targets. This ultimate was buffed before the release, making it possible to have 100% uptime on this now, which increases her viability to support with 100% burst uptime. We will talk about this a little bit more in a little bit. Ganyu's first passive talent gives her 20% extra crit rate for 5 seconds after firing a charge shot. Her second passive talent gives her 20% extra cryo damage bonus and also to her teammates as long as they're standing within the field of the Celestial Shower. So what role does Ganyu fit into. She is supposed to be a damage dealer main DPS. Since her kit is so focused on her charge shot, this means that most of our builds are going to be built around getting as much damage as possible around her charge shot. Even though she is charge shot focused, it doesn't mean that her normal attacks aren't viable. Ganyu does have the ability to be used as a support character because of the new buff, which gives her 100% uptime on her burst, and also the taunting ability is definitely a good support ability as well, that is at least for some characters. For example, a character like Vado would not like that because she wants her enemies to hit her. Although I think that her ability to support as a cryo applicator is probably not the best. We have other characters that can do that job a lot better. I tested this out using Klee and D Luke, and the results weren't that great. When I was using Klee with Ganyu's ult support, most of the time I was getting reverse melt reactions. So that means that Ganyu was the one proccing the melt reaction instead of Klee. The first reaction would always be Klee, but then every subsequent reaction would be triggered by Ganyu, which means we don't get the two times pyro melt damage. When I spammed charge attacks, occasionally I would get more procs from Klee, but ultimately it feels a little bit too random because the icicle shards themselves are random. Diluc was basically in the same boat, although he was a little bit more consistent because he likes to weave in auto attacks in between his E attacks, but once you pop his ult, his sword becomes infused with fire, so then Ganyu starts proccing the melt reactions instead of Diluc. The funny thing is that the pyro unit that would actually benefit from Ganyu being a support might actually be Amber because her charge shots require some charge time which allows her ult to actually apply cryo first. I haven't actually tested this yet myself but this seems like one of the more viable options to run if you were to run Ganyu as a cryo applicator and going for melt reactions. The reason why I know Ganyu is the one proccing the melt reactions is because we can look at the elements above the enemy's head. The first element is going to be the trigger element, and the second element is going to be the application element. So most of the time cryo is going to be the first element, and then fire is the second element, meaning Ganyu is the one proccing the reaction. Next, let's discuss Ganyu's damage output. You may be seeing a lot of videos out there right now that is showing 
following five digit numbers, but this is because most of those Ganyus are level 90 with talent level 10 scaling, a maxed out weapon that's probably max refined, artifact pieces that have really good substats. This however doesn't mean that those numbers are not achievable. You can definitely achieve those numbers with enough time, resources, and some luck. But I want to give you guys her realistic damage, basically cheap builds that you can get pretty fast right out the gate. So basically here, I want to level set with you guys and show you her damage at realistic free to play levels or low spending levels. All of these calculations are done with plus 16 artifacts where she is holding an attack percent sands, a cryo damage bonus goblet, and a crit damage percent circlet. These calculations also don't have the feather factored in, so these numbers are actually going to be slightly lower than you'd actually see in the game. These calculations are also done with the prototype crescent at max level 90, as well as talent level 6. So the first one is her level 60 ascension phase 4, and you can see she does pretty solid, even at a really low level. Her frost flake plus her bloom is doing around 4,000 damage without crit, and then doing about 8,000 damage with crit. 8,000 damage per charge shot with almost little to no investment is pretty good. We're almost at 10k. And when we bump her up to level 70 at the same ascension phase, she is getting a little bit more damage. She gets about 4,000 damage when not critting, and then about 8,500 damage with crit. The numbers on the bottom also show us the damage when we consider the prototype Crescent's attack percent buff when you hit a weak spot. We see a 20% increase in damage, and with the buff, we can almost reach 10k total damage at very low levels and reasonable investment in artifacts. There's also not too big of a difference between level 6 and level 70 at Ascension Phase 4. You don't really need to level her up all the way up to level 70 if you just want to keep her at level 60. They deal pretty much the same amount of damage. These numbers aren't even including any set bonuses from artifacts as well, or any potential attack percent or flat attack subsets. So again, these numbers are actually a little bit lower than you'd see in game. So this is looking really good for Ganyu. Alright, now let's compare her Ascension Phase 5 and her Ascension Phase 6. So at Ascension Phase 5 level 80 and talent level 6 versus when she has talent level 8 at the same level and the same Ascension Phase, our non-crits are still pretty weak, dealing only about 4k, whereas our crits are hitting for about 8k. And then at talent level 8, we're hitting 5k non-crits and about 10k crits. Now, if we actually look at the prototype Crescent buff, our crits bring us past the 10k mark. That's pretty damn good considering our crit damage percent is only around 120% in these calculations. The theme here is that our non-crit hits are pretty mediocre, but when we do hit those crits, and especially with the prototype crescent buff, we start seeing some pretty crazy numbers at really low levels. At ascension phase 6, we don't get much of an increase unless we level up our talent up to level 10. At level 10, we hit a little bit over 5k without our crits, so it's not too much of an increase from our talent level 6 and talent level 8, but our crits start hitting for 12k, a pretty nice increase from talent level 8. And with the Crescent buff, we get 6.6k non-crits and 17k crits. That is a massive crit damage increase. So the main thing to take away here is that our talent level is really the main source of our DPS, and the extra attack percent buff from the prototype Crescent is making our crits even stronger. Next is her ultimate. I thought that this section deserved its own spot because her ultimate is a little bit weird and interesting at the same time. So if you were wondering whether or not if her ultimate tracked enemies, unfortunately it doesn't really track. It seems to be pretty random. And based off my testing, your mileage may vary. One of the biggest factors in getting the most hits out of this ultimate is going to depend on the enemy's hurt box. Most larger type enemies like the Ruin Hunters and Ruin Guards and the big Hilly Churls and the boss Regis Vines, they get hit a lot more often than the small Hilly Churls and the Abyss Mages and um, some of the smaller human type enemies. Enemies that move a lot within the AoE and whether they are stationary also seems to be a factor in how many times Times they are going to be getting hit by the ult. So I thought I'd mention that because that is something that is a little bit different from other ultimates that we've seen in the game. Another important aspect about her ultimate is that she gets a 20% cryo damage bonus from her second passive talent. So basically, you know, try to use your charge shots from within your ultimate. 
Next is Ganyu's matchup spread. The thing with Ganyu is that she is going to struggle versus shield type enemies and she's definitely going to need help from her teammates in order to deal with them. Even with her taunting ability, she is not able to weave behind them and shoot them in the back, unfortunately. Although there are certain situations where sometimes the blooming effect from her charge shot allows her to bypass some shields sometimes. But more often than not, the shield is going to block all the damage and she doesn't really have a reliable way to deal damage to these types of enemies unless they are actively attacking and you are punishing those openings. Other than that, Ganyu has a great matchup spread versus both big groups and single target enemies. Ganyu's energy generation is quite average, but we're lucky that she actually generates particles when she does summoning damage with her elemental skill. She will generate elemental particles twice with her elemental skill. So once when she summons it, and then once once it explodes. So the problem with this is that if you don't hit an enemy with the explosion damage, then you're not going to generate any particles. And the problem with that is that a lot of the enemies like to backstep when they are readying their attack. So sometimes the explosion from the elemental skill doesn't actually hit the enemies and then you don't get the elemental particles. And on average, you'll be getting about two elemental particles from the summoning and another two from the explosion damage. So if you're able to damage your enemies twice with the skill, you're going to be generating about four elemental particles. Okay, so now what are some builds that we can use for Ganyu? Let's start with the artifact set builds. So the first artifact set build that you can run is a four piece Wanderer set. Now this set is a little bit hard to farm for because you have to fight the elite bosses and the drop rates aren't so great. So this might not be an option for a lot of players. The reason why this set is good is because the Wanderer's 4 piece set gives you an extra 35% damage on her charge shots. So a free 35% is pretty good. The next set is the Blizzard 4-piece set, so we're going to be getting 15% extra cryo damage, and then we're going to be getting a lot of extra crit rate, as long as we are taking advantage of its 4-piece set bonus, which gives us extra crit rate when we hit enemies that are affected by cryo. And then of course you can take this further if you want to actually freeze your enemies and get even more crit rate. So the four-piece Blizzard set would work much better if you plan to run Ganyu as a solo DPS. Either that or to run her in a freeze comp. Any other comps that run Melt or Superconduct is not going to be a good idea because you're not going to be able to take advantage of the full four-piece set. The inconsistencies of getting cryo application or freezing your enemies is going to be too hard to maintain if you run Pyro or Electro on that team as well. So if you do plan to run any other other kind of team comp that uses reactions other than freeze, you're better off running the Wanderers for a piece set for the extra 35% damage in your charge shots. Another classic set that you can run is two piece Blizzard set with two piece Gladiator set. This will give you 18% extra attack percent and then 15% extra cryo damage. You can also consider using the Martial Artist set because it gives extra normal and charge attack damage by about 25% whenever you use your elemental skill. I thought that would be worth noting, but it's probably not your best option because you can farm other things a lot easier. Now what about when it comes to weapons? The prototype Crescent is probably going to be her best free-to-play option. A note on this, however, is that not all enemies have weak spots, but for those that do, the uptime on the attack percent buff is going to be very high. For 3-star weapons, the Slingshot and the Sharpshooter's Oath are pretty good options. She definitely is going to enjoy the extra crit damage or the extra crit rate, and the passive talents also just work well with just giving her more damage. If you have the Black Cliff Warbow, that weapon can work pretty well as well. On the other hand, the Battle Pass weapon, the Viridescent Hunt, is not a great option for her. Now let's go over Ganyu's charged attacks. First things first is don't miss. If you think you're gonna miss, then just shoot the ground and rely on the AoE. The Bloom has the biggest scaling anyway, so you know, there's no shame if you can't hit moving targets. Her DPS is also going to depend on how good you can time your shots. It's pretty difficult to release the arrow with frame perfection. So there's obviously going to be some human error that is going to add some extra frames and slightly decrease our DPS. But in order to help you out, you want to pay attention to the circle around the tip of the arrow's head so that you know when to release the button to fire. Right when that circle coalesces to the head of the arrow is when you want to release your shot. Try to anticipate when that circle is going to hit the tip and then release your shot. A couple 
couple more tips for Ganyu's charge shot is that you shouldn't use the aiming mode, which is the mode that you do when you press the R button. The gaps are a little bit too large in between the shots. Even though after the first shot, each subsequent shot, the shot's charge animation is actually a little bit faster than the typical charge animation. But since the delay between shots is too long, that faster charge animation doesn't really matter. So it's best to just cancel the shot by lowering your bow and then aiming again to get the best DPS. This is going to take a little bit of practice because there is a lot of room for error here, but you can raise your bow and lower your bow pretty fast. Another thing to know is that the arrow and the bloom will crit independently of each other. So even though you get a crit with the initial shot of your arrow, the bloom might not crit as well. Okay, now let's talk about the frame data for her charged attacks. So from the moment that you start holding the charge attack button, it's going to take 107 frames until you get your full charge. So at frame 107 is when the circle coalesces on the tip of the bow and you're able to fire a fully charged charge shot with the bloom effect. This translates to about 1.79 seconds, but again, due to human error, we have to add a little bit of wiggle room and error to our charge shots, so we can pretty much call this about 2 seconds of charge time. And the 107 frames isn't including the time it takes to lower your bow and then raise it up again. It actually takes about 20 frames to lower your bow, so that means in total, it takes about 127 frames to complete the entire animation of raising your bow, shooting the arrow, and then lowering it again. So the whole sequence is pretty much around 2 seconds or a little bit over 2 seconds to fire off a charge shot. So is Ganyu worth being a 5 star? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Her damage is really good and she works pretty well as a solo DPS. She does have the ability to support as well which makes her fairly flexible. She's not just limited to being used in freeze comps and using solely the Blizzard Strayer set, right? You can use Ganyu in other team comps that utilize other reactions if you decide to use the Wanderer's Troop artifact set instead. So her ability to be used on different kinds of teams is actually quite flexible and a lot more flexible than I initially thought. And with her new buff, her ability to support is also quite decent. Although she might not be that great as a cryo applicator, she can still just do lots of damage with her ultimate. And with it being possible to have 100% uptime on it, that means she's doing pretty good off-field damage. Ganyu's constellations are also pretty freaking insane. C1 is a really good constellation and it's also very achievable for many players that sp just spend a little bit of money or who have saved all their primogems since release. Her C6 is also just kind of insane and just makes her DPS go crazy high. I don't have her obviously but just from reading the effects I can just tell that her C6 constellation is crazy good. Now her banner is a little bit debatable because it contains two free characters that we've already gotten in Noelle and Shangling. Noelle is very strong at C6, but again, that requires a Constellation 6 to get, and Shangling is a solid unit, but she doesn't necessarily need Constellations to be good. Her C4 is pretty good, and her C6 is also pretty good, giving her extra duration on her Pyronado and also 15% Pyro Res debuff. Xing Cho is also a great 4-star character that can work on almost any team composition. So those are my thoughts on her banner. So if you absolutely love her design, and you like a charge shot playstyle, then definitely go ahead and pull for her. But just remember that there will be more characters that can perform just as well or even better than her in the future. 